Eddie Moore is a disheveled, jobless writer. He has a book contract, but he speaks more than he writes. He feels struggling to write. His fiancée Lindy, who was recently promoted to editor, is dissatisfied that he hasn't advanced in his profession and breaks up with him, after she gives him his keys to him after lunch. He walks down a New York street, he meets Vernon, his ex-brother-in-law, who he hasn't seen in nine years. Vernon is pleasant and invites Eddie to a drink. They discuss about Melissa, who lives upstate. Eddie admits he is behind schedule with a book. Vern, who is currently consulting with a pharmaceutical business, gives Eddie a new brain medicine that will be available in the market next year. Vern leaves his business card behind but has to go. Eddie goes home after taking the translucent pill. He meets the wife of the landlord in the stairwell, where she criticizes him for not having a career and for paying rent late. As the medicine starts to work, Eddie starts to observe things clearly. He starts talking confidently to the woman about legal studies, and shortly after, they prepare her law school paper together then have sex. When Eddie returns to his apartment, he observes the mess and immediately cleans it up. After that, he opens his laptop and begins to write. The next morning, he is back to normal, but he has printed several hundred pages of his book. He takes them to his editor, who looks at them carefully. He checks his voicemail from his apartment. The editor is excited to speak. She has read 40 pages and is really impressed. Eddie goes to see Vernon. Vern's face is bloodied, but he keeps silent about what happened. He tells Eddie that the drug is called NZT48 and wants him to pick his dry cleaning and some food. Eddie will do anything for another pill. When he returns, the door is open, Vern is dead on the sofa, and the flat has been looted. Eddie, shocked and terrified, settles down and dials 911. As he waits for the police, he looks inside the oven for the NZT48 stash and discovers a plastic baggie containing the pills, a wad of cash, and an address book. He hides these from the police, who eventually let him go after a brief interview. At the police station, he speaks on the phone with his ex-wife, Melissa, who does not want to see him. Back at home, he takes another pill and gets a haircut, new clothing and the determination to finish the book in four days. He learns piano, cards, fitness, and new languages, and he talks to new friends like he knows everything. Kevin Doyle, a stockbroker, gives him his business card. Eddie is then invited to a jet set beach party in the south. He drives around in a Maserati with a beautiful woman, then shows off by cliff diving for more than a hundred feet, revealing that one of the adverse effects of NZT is to never stop moving forward. He realizes he needs a lot of money to carry out his epiphany about what to do with the rest of his life. He slowly begins day trading but quickly realizes that he requires more money. He meets Gennady, a Russian loan shark, through the cafe owner. The Russian gives him $100,000 and says if he fails to return it, he'll skin him alive. Eddie now trades stocks seriously and quickly increases his brokerage account to $2 million. There are job offers and reporters calling. Kevin Doyle offers an invitation to meet with Carl Van Loon, a successful businessman. Lindy feels delighted with the new Eddie during dinner. They reconnect. The tabloid publishes Eddie's picture as a mystery trader. They seem to be being watched by a man wearing a tan coat. Eddie is nervous at night because he senses something. In a restaurant, Eddie meets with business raider Carl Van Loon. He jokes about medication as his secret, then builds on his knowledge and hints at a mass psychology formula. Carl tests Eddie in a limo by asking him to check a file containing information from various companies. Eddie learns that there is a huge merger in the works. Carl drops Eddie off in Chinatown and invites him again the next day for another meeting. Eddie loses track of time while he walks, an emergent side effect of NZT. In between random incidents, he remembers watching Bruce Lee films to aid him in fighting with a group of robbers in a subway station. Then. He finds himself in a bar where he makes new friends and makes out with a blonde. He returns to normal 18 hours. Later, limping but clueless to what happened. He's almost out of NZT48 and has lost the ability to read the corporate files. He calls to cancel the meeting with Carl, but Kevin convinced him to go. Carl asks about Hank Atwood, a corporate rival who came to prominence two years ago. But Eddie sees a story on TV about a blonde woman who was killed in a hotel the day before. He apologizes and vomit outside, because he fears he might have killed the girl during his mental collapse. Before taking another pill, Eddie is afraid of the side effects from NZT. He calls Vernon's other clients to find out more. 
but every call results in a dead end. The users are either hospitalized or dead. The next phone call he makes just so happens to be to the tough guy in the tan coat, who's seated across from a parquet. Eddie realizes the connection first and flees. He meets Melissa, his ex-wife, in a cafe. She is a strung out junkie who admits that she took NZT as well. But she quit when she realized that no one could operate at that level of mental activity without negative effects. Vernon later informed her that other users had passed away. Now that she has been off it for two years, her life is in mess and she finds it difficult to focus for more than 10 minutes. She advises him to gradually taper off, as going cold turkey kills. She walks off with a noticeable limb. Russian loan shark, Gennady, confronts Eddie and demands his money. He grabs and takes a dropped NZT pill while rousting Eddie. After receiving his $100,000 back, he feels good and lets Eddie leave. Eddie, unwell and bedraggled, rushes into Lindy's office. He tells her everything, realizes he needs the drugs, and admits to keeping his primary stash in her home. She leaves Eddie lying on the floor of her office and grabs the plastic bag herself. But the man in the parquet stand coat attacks her in the taxi travel back. He violently murders two witnesses who attempt to assist her, as she flees and hides in Central Park. She calls Eddie, who pushes her to take one of the tablets. Lindy flees under its influence by using an ice skater as a weapon. Lindy sleeps with Eddie, but she gets stressed and seems serious in the morning. Eddie claims he needs more time to set things up with NZT, but she wants no further involvement. Lindy walks away from him. Eddie then employs two bodyguards. Gennady walks to Eddie again and this time he wants more pills. He meets with Carl again, looking and behaving smart, and he's given the task of managing the biggest takeover of a company in history. Eddie has discovered the right amount to take, making sure to eat and stay away from alcohol to prevent blackouts. He employs a chemist to reverse engineer the NZT tablets in just six months. And he orders a customized suit with invisible compartments to hide his drugs. He notices a police detective assigned to Vernon's death investigation observing him during a business lunch. The police officer shows Eddie with a picture of him in the newspaper, which identified that he was staying at the hotel where the dead blonde was staying. After Eddie hires Morris Brandt, an excellent and lethal attorney, he gets cleared against poor circumstantial evidence. In meantime, the merger continues and is almost complete. Eddie decides his intention to leave, but Carl wants him to stay, praising Eddie's amazing skill throwing it around like a trust fund baby. But pointing out that he hasn't paid his dues through competition to know how to evaluate his competition. After discovering that his hotel room has been broken into, Eddie purchases a $8.5 million safe concept condo fortress. On the street, he meets the Russian again, who demands 20 drugs or else. Eddie is certain that he will be able to deal with Gennady now that he is due to collect $40 million from the Atwood transaction. Hank Atwood never shows up at office. The wife of Hank Atwood informs Carl and Eddie that her husband is hospitalized. Upon his recovery, the deal will be finalized. He believes that Atwood must also be a NZT user since he has run out of NZT when he sees Mrs. Atwood's scar limo driver, the man in the tan coat, on the street. Eddie needs to go to the police station and get involved in an idea lineup, but Morris Brandt, his lawyer, is able to get him out. Carl is upset in the office. Atwood is in a coma, and Carl is curious about Eddie's status, believing Eddie is aware of what is happening and fearing betrayal. Eddie realizes in the bathroom that his drugs are missing, stolen. Eddie gets a box addressed to him and goes, leaving an angry Van Loon behind. Inside the box are the chopped hands of his two bodyguards. Eddie watches TV in the condo and sees Mrs. Atwood and her lawyer, Morris Brandt, who also represents him. The Russians are seen approaching him from the surveillance cameras, attacking his steel door with a chainsaw as he realizes that's where his secret tablets have disappeared. Eddie walks to the edge of the balcony, prepared to end his life rather than give in to their obviously horrific pain. Just as the Russians are breaking in, he remembers suddenly where the final NZT tablet is and tries to get it back but loses it. Gennady shoots his own final pill, converted into an injectable form, and begins preparing Eddie for the gradual terrible anguish he is about to endure. Eddie turns the tables and kills Gennady with one final thrust. The other two Russian thugs return to the room after using drills to break into Eddie's safe. After taking Gennady's NZT enriched blood, Eddie fights off the two, blinding one before killing the other out of self-defense. 
Hank Atwood died in the hospital. Eddie realizes that Brand stole his medicines but did not give them to Mr. Atwood. Eddie meets the man in the tan coat in the waiting room. Now that his boss has died, assists Eddie in his search through Brand's safe, where he discovers his pills packet, while the tan coat man watches over Brand, who is tied and gagged on the floor. Eddie's book is published a year later, and he runs for the United States Senate. Carl makes him a surprise visit in his campaign headquarters. Though warm at first, Carl indicates that he understands how Eddie did it and has subsequently shut down his NZT lab. Carl will guarantee an unlimited supply in exchange for future insider information. Eddie fiercely emerges. Showing off his talents, he claims that he is no longer on NZT and does not require it, having become permanently enhanced, and pushes Carl away. Eddie and Lindy reunite in a fancy Chinese restaurant. He orders his dinner in fluent Chinese and observes Lindy's surprised look. What? He asks, feigning humility.